What's going on guys? We are back once again and we are finally going to be discussing Obi-Wan Kenobi the series episode 3. Now I always say you guys should know if you haven't seen it go check it out because I don't want to spoil anybody. But without further ado we are going to continue with the events of happening last uh, episode. We see a lot that happens in this. Um, Obi-Wan is trying to figure out what exactly you know, he just heard, you know, Anakin being alive, he's trying to concentrate, he's trying to contact Qui-Gon Jinn, and unfortunately he doesn't, and what's really crazy is while he's doing this, we see Anakin slash Vader in his back to tank, and we get to see him put together, which was absolutely amazing, and we even get to see James Earl Jones replace his role as the legendary Darth Vader, and Hayden Christian is the one that's in the suit, so... A big smile came to my face with this. I was very happy, and some, some a lot about this episode made me happy. But at the same time, there was things where I'm like, uh, I don't know. But I, I like this. I mean, I did. I, I really liked how they even put in a few things, which I'm gonna get later into. And we see where Reva contacts Vader, stating that uh, they're on him, and he says that it doesn't matter about the Grand Inquisitor. He even states that if you bring him to me, then you will have what you want, which is to become Grand Inquisitor. <clears throat> now, I will say which was very interesting is how they showed Vader's castle, which is absolutely amazing. It was gorgeous cinematography. Then we could see where they go on to this planet trying to hide from the Empire and him and Leia walking through and trying to figure out what exactly they're going to be doing. Now, what's very interesting is they're walking and then they come across someone by the name of Freck who is a uh, deliverer, I would say, and he offers them a ride but then offers uh, Stormtroopers a ride and makes everyone uncomfortable, so he has, to, he has to play it just right to where they don't figure out that he's a Jedi Knight and then also that he accidentally calls uh because he goes by another name he goes by you know luma for leia saying that that's his daughter and he even kind of makes it seem like hey you know because he messes up and he says that you know her name's leia reminds me so much of her mother and he says we're going through a hard time so he kind of buys it off and then leia even asks him that's the second time he brought that up and he, she asks him are you my father and he I was kind of hoping that he would say no, but I knew him, but then again, he would be giving too much away, possibly. So, he even tells her no, but that's what happens when you go to a new family like you did. He even says all he remembers was a few things about his mother and his father. He says that maybe he, even, he, he believes he even had a brother, so it makes me wonder who was his brother and where is he now if he's even still alive. Uh, that's something I never really knew. And then at the same time, we see where Reva returns to the Grand Inquisitor HQ, and she's trying to assimilate power right now because uh, she wants power over the Inquisitors, and the fifth brother is upset because he wants power rather than her. And she even says, Are you going to go up against Ward Vader's uh, commands? Because if you do, then basically you can take it up with him. Now, I will say, which was absolutely incredible was how they played this off because Obi-Wan has to go to a checkpoint and he has to fight his way out because they do realize yeah this is Obi-Wan Kenobi and then what we do see is there's more stormtroopers that show up and then a commander but then he gets realized that that was the contact who we were supposed to meet by the one in the last episode now she is not really an imperial she's posing to be an imperial but at the same time she was in the empire which she later reveals her name is Talia and she reveals that she was in the empire she agreed with what they stood for at the time and then she felt like she you know did what was wrong now finally when going through and waiting for night to fall so that way they can go on the brand new uh starship so they can leave we are waiting for the inquisitors to arrive unfortunately but then as soon as everything seems like it's going to go from bad to worse we see where he even finds out quinlan boss was there quinlan has been smuggling children and you know, Padawan learners slash Jedi slash civilians slash force sensitive children away on that planet for a long time. So again, if you guys don't remember Quinlan Boss, he was a Jedi that we saw in Clone Wars, also in the books and legends. So go look him up. And then we also get to see uh, where, which was really cool, where 
as soon as they're about ready to leave, because Leia even says uh, to Tala, like, hey, can you teach me how to shoot? And he's like, well, no. And then she's like, well, this one's going to become a great war. He's like, I got a feeling you're right. So I found that really cool because, again, it's like that whole saying, like, oh, if you only knew. But as soon as that happens, he feels the presence of Vader. Vader shows up, and he comes in like a boss, man. I mean, they. I believe if Hayden Christen was in the, shoot, in the suit, man, this is exactly what we need to see while he was at his full power, while he was still Anakin. Because imagine he was walking through, strangling people. He was just pushing people away, basically intimidating Obi-Wan. Like, if you want to save him, then come get me. And that's what he did. And then Obi-Wan gave up what he thought was the right thing to do. Goes up against Vader later on in the episode after telling Leia to go with Talia. And after this happens, running through the tunnel and then later having a duel with Vader and still running away. And he even tell, asks him, what have you become? And Vader responds, what you made me. And he even says, the years have made you weak. And Vader kicked his ass. He really did. Vader kicked his ass because Obi-Wan, in a way, he was trying to diverge him but not really fight him. But at the same time, you got to imagine how weak Obi-Wan is for being cut off from the Force now for 10 years. And Vader has had to relearn everything ever since he's cut off his limbs. And he's had to relearn the ways of the Force and also how to use the lightsaber, how to walk, how to, you know, with all the machines that he's had to use now just to walk, breathe, move, and use his hands. Everything now is way different for him as a so-called human being. And he puts Obi-Wan through the ringer, man. I mean, he literally grabs him and strangles him and then lights a fire with the crystals of the mining and he throws Obi-Wan in it. Now again, from what I remember, that was from one of the comics. So they put that in there and then because it was a dream that Vader was having. And then also we see where he does let him burn and then it stops. And he even says that this is only the beginning and he wants the stormtroopers to come get him. Then Tala shows up after Leia asks her to go help him to where she starts shooting and is able to save him to a certain degree and asks the droid that I was helping, which was a lifter droid, to help him even though that Vader was going to still try to get him. But what's really interesting is we got to see uh, Hayden Christian in this episode as well because Hayden Christian actually was in this episode where Ben, you know, aka Obi-Wan, thought he saw him in uh, in the open. So that was pretty cool. And we unfortunately see where Rava somehow now got, got a hold of Leia after trying to kill the one that Leia was supposed to meet. So now Reva has Leia and Obi-Wan is injured as well as now with Talia. So it kind of makes me wonder if this is possibly going to be a friend or maybe a love interest with Obi-Wan. Who knows? Um, again, it shows Reva's real headstrong narcissistic mentality. Again, I'm not a friend. I'm not a fan of Reva. I don't like her character. Uh, I think she's very annoying. But again, I know that's possibly how she's written. That's how they're writing it. And again, she's wanting to become the Grand Inquisitor. But again, I am enjoying this to a certain degree. I enjoyed seeing Vader again. I enjoyed seeing what I saw throughout this episode. I think it was great. Um, I knew we were one, I was ho kind of hoping we'd get a little bit of a better duel, but it kind of shows how powerful Vader is at this moment in time. And then later on how we, they may duel again. I, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see, but there was a lot in here guys. I mean, I'm hoping I got everything. Hopefully I did. What'd you guys think about the episode? Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And as always, I've seen you guys on the very next one.